What's up everybody, it's your boy Moses and I'm back again with another video and in today's video I'm gonna be talking about five reasons why I moved from Logic Pro X to Studio One 5 for mixing and mastering and uh, I wanted to stick around because I'm gonna be sharing some of the tips that kind of helped me to navigate my you know my process from moving into one door that i know very well into another door uh so if you're new if you're new to the channel my name is moses and i'm a music producer i'm a musician and i'm also a mixing engineer and i make videos on youtube talking about you know gears and stuff and mixing and producing one or two things and i'm playing keyboard as well online go check my other videos you see what i'm talking about but on today's video it's pretty much why i left from logic pro for mixing and mastering i still produce in logic pro don't get me wrong i still produce i still work on logic almost every other day but i left for mixing from logic into studio one i'm gonna share with you because it's been going on for a while now like almost five months now i've been sharing on social media uh some other tips and actually i've been sharing on social media one or two things that i've been doing in the studio so if you don't follow me on social media go follow me right now i'm, I'm putting whatever my handles are on those social media platforms you can go follow me on those social media platforms so that you see what it is that i'm doing on a daily to day basis concerning music production and if you're not a subscriber yet please make sure you subscribe good stuff coming and we've been making good stuff for you guys so let's get right into it the reason why i moved five reasons five five let's go into logic and studio one we're gonna be moving back and forth from the from the two programs and i'm gonna just like uh you know talk to you guys about my own process in this place so quick one let's go the reason number one that i left is the io block size the interface block size or sample rate some some people call it different things in different uh different daws okay so let me show you in logic in Logic, when you go to your preferences, you see I.O. buffer size. I.O. buffer size, the maximum you can go in Logic is 1024. 1024, that's the max. Now, I.O. buffer size, what this means for those who don't know is the higher the I.O. buffer size, the more you can do stuff inside of your program. The more you can add more track, the more you can add more plugin, the more you have room to work with your stuff before your computer start crying like my own 2013 16 gig ram macbook pro which is dying right now needs a bigger brother so i don't know what we're going to do about that but the problem is this logic is 10 24 1024 i over for size samples in studio one you see my screen right now in studio one let's go to studio one what do you see block size highest you can go all the way to 4096 that is four times oh my god so so are you telling me that i can do four times more of what i can do with io1024 in logic i can do four times more before my computer cries inside of studio one i don't know i'm not gonna i'm not shooting that but i can tell you it's been a game changer right the things i can do when mixing in logic i can have some plugin because everything is choked up i can do more i have room to do more stuff right now that is the number one number two reason why i left is the search function in studio one trust me i have never seen a door with this kind of search function this this function is crazy all right let's go into the let's go into the screen all right all right so inside of studio one right now i click on browse and you see the search function right here i can literally search for almost anything i'm looking for i know there's some kind of search function in logic but this one is different here i can search for a plugin i can search for an effect which is a plugin i can search for an instrument i can search for loops i can search for file on my computer i can search for almost anything so let's say i'm on effect and i'm searching for cla right it's gonna bring for me plugins that has that word CLA in front of it, right? You see what I'm saying? CLA 70C, CLA stereo, CLA drum, CLA ecosphere, everything CLA is gonna come. Anything that has CLA in front of it, right? It's gonna show up. I can I, I can just look for a plugin. I can look for preset. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I can look for a preset. So I, let's say I have a preset that I call uh Jason, it's like a Jason Joshua kind of 
preset that I copied from him and replicated it in my own setup. Justin J, boom, I can find the preset right here. I cannot do that in Logic. I want to know where will I do a search that I can search for plugin just like that. I can. If I want to add plugin right here, if I want to add plugin on my stuff, I, I have to like manually search for it from the folders, right? I cannot. Here, the only thing you can do is search for files on your computer, search for files and search for other things, right? You can search for instrument, you can search for something and grab it quickly. So that speeds up my workflow a lot, just being able to search, search for preset, even preset that comes with the manufacturer's plugin, like manufacturer's presets, right? You can just grab it, you can search for anything, right? You can say rock, search for rock right you start seeing different kind of different kind of things you know preset that you can you can you can take so many things you can see inside of here right if from for, for plugins i can see rock things like that i can see presets right here you see that solid rock 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 drums rock bass drum rock i add things like that that you can search for even third party plugins right not just the personas plugins all right so enough about that let's go to number three and let me show you so this is this is a really convincing situation right now all right the third reason why i left is the drag and drop functions so i just talk about the search function right i talk about search function i can literally search for something drag it and drop it let me show you what i'm talking about so let's say this is this is this is a guitar boss, right? I said rock, rock steady. I search for rock and I see a preset. Oh, I don't know what plugin this is anyways, but it's rock steady. All right, let's drag it and I can drop it here. Okay. Oh, wait, it turns out to be an Ampeg guitar, right? This is a, this is not even a Presonus plugin. That's what I'm telling. The search function works for pretty much anything on your computer, right? It works for anything on your computer, any plugin you have, any file you have it brings it out so now i have a rock steady preset on my guitar that i can just slap on it well it's for bass but anyways that's just a function that i'm talking about if i'm looking for an instrument like let's say i created i don't even need to create that's a that's another funny thing i can come to the instrument right here and i say keyscape right keyscape keyscape shows up and i drag it in here Guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna create the track by itself. Like, come on, right? And I have that load up, key skip, boom. And I can play something on my MIDI, MIDI keyboard right now. And I have sound and I start playing fast, drag and drop. You can drag anything. Let me show you something else again. Let's say I have a send right here. I want to copy this same send and put it on my swell guitar, right? Let's just say I want to do that for whatever reason. You see this and I will just drag it, drag this entire preset, boom, and drop it on my swell, boom. When I drop it, it gives me everything. All of the send, just like I have it on the lead boss, I have it right here. Now let me control Z and uh, make sure I don't save that, right? I just return that. I can take this send lead vocal massive right i say i want to drag this only one cent drag it and drop it on the piano boom right i just dropped it on the piano the piano now has a cent going to lv massive whatever that plugin is is a valhalla super massive plugin plugin right that's another function you can take a plugin from here take this pull chart right now and drop it on the piano boom i have it turn it off right anything drag anything from anywhere to anywhere like it works like a magic. There's no way you can do that. If you try to drag this in Logic and you put it here, boom, it's gone out of this place. So you have to do what? You have to hold down the option this and this, right? Okay, cool. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I can manage that. But I'm not going to drag all of this scent. I have to what? I have to manually do what we call a uh, copy channel preset, right? And go and paste. So I, I, this is long story why can't i just drag and drop right making my workflow faster that's another tip number four reason number four reason is the gain envelope so what i mean by the gain envelope is this so let me show you something on this vocal right now 
Let's take this away. Look at this. Let me turn off the gain envelope. Gain envelope is half. Off right now. I'm gonna zoom. Okay. Now you can see this vocal right now. It's just uh, it's a it's it's decent, but it's dynamic, right? Some places are up, some places are down. If I want, I can use a compressor to kind of level everything. But I try to make sure my 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 volume is decent before I try compressing everything because I don't want it when you when you get to the softer places and you get to the higher places, the compressor is just doing different things, right? I want it to be steady. Okay, in Logic. If I have a similar vocal, let's just assume this is a similar vocal. It's not the same, but it's similar, right? I have softer areas everywhere. If I want to manually edit this vocal, I have to do something like this, right? I have to do, oh, let me unfreeze this. I have to do something like this and manually do what? Gain this hop or gain this down, whichever way I want to do it. And then manually do that inside of Logic. Here, I don't have to do that. Turn on the gain envelope, okay? Turn on the gain envelope, you see. You can manually zone in on the on the walls, and as if you're doing automation, you can automate that place to come up. You see what I'm saying? Boom! And when you turn off the gain envelope, it's still there. It's not gone, right? Boom! <laughs> see what I'm talking about? That's crazy. So I can zone in on every individual performance, bring up the vocals where I want to bring it up. Right, turn on the gain envelope again. I can just leave it on anyways if I want to. Turn it on and say this. Oh, this place is too quiet. Let me just bring it up a little bit. 5 dB, 4 dB, 3 dB, whatever amount that makes sense, right? For me, for that word, for that phrase that the singer is singing at that particular point in time. So that's a no-brainer for me. I don't have to cut to cut, and then after I'm done with all of this, I still have to apply fade. If not, I'm gonna be hearing all those clicks here in studio one you don't need to do that by the way studio one is not sponsoring me to do all of this i'm only sharing what i've been doing with you guys so it's, if it's gonna help you come on do it too no so i don't need to worry about uh fading in or fading out anymore because i never really caught the audio anyways right turn in turn off the gain envelope again everything still looks normal as if i didn't do anything but i, I just edited the old vocal and make sure the the performance is balanced and level matched let's go into the next one number five the fifth one the final final one the cpu usage function here in studio one is a little bit different all right you see the performance right here uh, you see the CPU level right here is telling me I'm eating about 48, 48% and it's going to tell me what plugin is taking my power the most. So there's a plugin here, the T-Rex uh, 5 Tip Machine plugin. It's taking 26%. Oh my god, I can just decide to turn it off. When I turn that off, my entire plugin usage goes down to 27%. I don't know, you can do that in Logic. The only thing you're gonna get is this, right? You're gonna get this, and when you start playing it back, I'm gonna mute this because this is somebody else's project, right? So, you see that? You're just gonna keep playing back and boom, overload. <laughs> <laughs> overload already there is two performance thread here that is still even not being used right now at all i don't know why it's not using it but it's not using it and it's not going to tell me what is the problem what is the plugin giving me that issue that can you know what let me just turn off this plugin and find something else that i can use to do the same function it's not going to tell you that studio one is going to tell you what each plugin is using right so hey come on this is different. Ah, oh, yeah, it's just agreeing to what I just said. It's different. These are the five reasons why I decided to, you know, move on from studio, from Logic to Studio One for mixing. I still produce in Logic because I'm very much familiar with Logic and I can do some stuff very fast when producing. But when it comes to mixing, saving myself time, plugins, CPU power, all of those things. I think Studio One is just winning right now for me. I don't know when I'll be going back to Logic for mixing, but of course I will let you guys know when I decided to do that. But hey, this is the video right now. This is what's going on with me right now and my workflow. Give it a try, you know, there's a trial version you can get from Presonus try a version for like 60 days or 30 days i don't know exactly give it a try if you like it cool cool get it really nice plugins too that comes with it but 
I never really use manufacturers, uh, uh, the DAW plugins anyways, except for the EQ and basic compression and delays and stuff like that. But this is really nice. And what I'm going to tell you is if you're afraid of moving from one door to the other, I think professionals has made it so easy for, for you to be really intuitive about how the plugins work, how the workflow is. It's really easy. You really can not go missing. You, you may need to Google sometimes or go on YouTube to check for one thing or that. How do I duplicate track? How do I, you know, do one or two? I don't know. Whatever it is, you can Google and you can find it. But most of the time, it is really intuitive. You can really do what you need to do easily with it. So I think Studio One is a good move if if you come from logic you can move to studio one easily and you'll be fine without the problem of oh i don't want to change my workflow too much and start learning the commands don't worry about all of that it's gonna be really easy it's actually easy i've been using this for a few months mixed an album with it mixed a whole uh project with this i'm, I'm not even gonna go into all of the details but yeah it's nice give it a shot you may like it and thanks for watching thanks for taking your time to watch the video i hope you like it i hope you enjoy the video if you love it you know what give it a like please and make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel we'd love to have you here and we're building something tangible with this channel so make sure you be a part of it subscribe down there and if you want to let me know what you're drawing what doll you're using you can comment down below i use a button every now and then for charge loops and live performances but i'm done produce or mix on everything right i'm not very familiar with it i'm not a guru hey sorry about guys but i think it's dope but i stick with logic and studio one for now all right cool drop your comment below if you think you're gonna make move if you think these five reasons are good enough for you to move from logic to studio one or from other door that you currently own right now to studio one drop a comment below come on let's vibe let's talk about it let's chat if you want me to answer one or two questions about studio one and how my workflow has been um happy to do that you know what just give me a Give me a comment down below. All right. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for taking your time. Uh, Happy New Year again. If you're just watching this video for the very first If you're just watching my channel for the very first time. All right. Hey, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, guys. Bye.